How's it going, my dudes? This video's brought to you by Squarespace today. You know them as that cool little thing what sits in your hand and you can check the internet and everything on the... No, I'm kidding. It's of course not your smartphone. It's the Tricorder. It's been around in Star Trek since 1966 and you might be a bit surprised to find out where the idea for the Tricorder originally came from. Thank you so much to the wonderful Jack Kiley for writing the original article upon which this is based. I'm Sean Ferry for Trek Culture and here are 10 things you didn't know about Tricorders. Number 10. A brief history history of the ones that occasionally explode. The world's most famous scanning device has a threefold name, but the story of its creation is twofold. The original impetus for the idea came from Gene Roddenberry as a way to expand the role of the yeoman. In a memo to Robert H. Justman from the 14th of April 1966, as cited in The Mating of Star Trek, Roddenberry noted, it has been suggested that she, meaning the captain's yeoman, carry as part of her regular equipment some sort of neat over-the-shoulder recorder electronic camera, haven't given much creative thought to what this would look like. Such thought went to Oscar-winning artist, designer, and sculptor Hua Ming Chang. As brilliant as he was prolific, Chang had already designed the Talosian heads for the cage and later created the M113 salt creatures, the Baylock effigy, the Gorn, the Tribbles, the Vulcan loot, the Romulan bird of prey, the classic flip communicator, and built the phaser props based on Matt Jeffrey's design. For his tricorder design and build, Chang charged Desilu Studios a mere $275 apiece. His initial sketch, that can be found in Inside Star Trek The Real Story is both elegantly simple and finely detailed, featuring the familiar screen, information discs, top pivot and push buttons that make the device iconic with or without a certain tendency to explode. Number 9. Naming Magic According to the Starfleet Medical Reference Manual, tricorders are in practice a small sensor computer recorder or a tri-function recorder. The fact that the meaning of the name has never been discussed explicitly on screen gets the Star Trek Lower Decks treatment in the soon-to-be-released USS Cerritos crew handbook. As Ensign Rutherford states, good old trikey, they call it a tricorder because it cords so many more than three things. In Star Trek Enterprise, they were just called hand scanners, of course, simpler times. What it does cord, as a matter of advanced future science fact, does just as well to be mostly indistinguishable from magic, a handy device to move the plot along. We're never actually shown the tricorder operations manual. Occasionally, TV magic also clashes with in-world practicality just how did Voyager get those tricorder upgrades in Season 2? If you believe Rick Sternbach, they had them in the cargo bay all along. The original series era tricorders weren't given a model number until perhaps most recently in Those Old Scientists, when Boimler suggested that TS-122 might be the model's true name, with the TS-120 being a predecessor. Trek's following century then gave us a whole new series of names for a brand new series of tricorders. Number 8. Next Gens From Star Trek The Next Generation onwards, we've had the TR-566, the TR-587, the TR-590-10 and 11, the Admiral Janeway Future Erased ones, the relatively slimline ones, TR-890-15, those Nemesis Pam Pilot ones, and the Purple Stripe ones, amongst other tricorders. The farthest far future of scanning is all about what you can cram into a tri combat, and in Star Trek Insurrection, we also got the sneakiest of peaks at the wrist tricorder. Wearable tech? That'll never catch on. It is sadly not true that Martin Cooper's original mobile phone was inspired by Star Trek, but Motorola did give a knowing nod to the original series communicator when they named their first clamshell phone the Star Tac in 1996. Art imitated life imitated art when the 25th century tricorders got a very 21st century upgrade in Star Trek Picard's season two. They were Samsung Z flip phones in a case. A medical version with a detachable hand scanner was also seen in Picard Season 3. All the flip tricorder designs in The Next Generation, Voyager and Deep Space Nine were the work of senior production illustrator and designer Rick Sternbach, who also co-designed Deep Space Nine, the Intrepid and Prometheus class, the Runabouts and the Delta Flyer. Number 7. Uses, Misuses and Abuses There's a big red bit labelled Emerge, E-M-R-G, on the TR-560, 580 and 590 tricorder modules. You might think that this was to send a distress call, but according to The Next Generation, 
generation technical manual, it's actually the emergency dump everything to the ship button. Pressing it will send the tricorder's entire memory up to a range of 40,000 kilometers, disabling all scanning functions for about 0.875 seconds and draining half the power as well. Aside from ensuring Starfleet has all your data before you die, there are plenty of things you can do with a standard tricorder. Packed full of mechanical, electromagnetic and subspace sensors, all tricorders from the start of the next generation to at least Star Trek Nemesis had three input settings. Geo, or geological, bio, biological and met as in meteorological for all your scanning needs. Tricorders can't detect neutrino emissions however, so connect to a visor instead. The Star Trek Voyager technical manual gives a rather blunt description of how to use your tricorder. Simply point it at whatever it is you want to study. If you're after exact detail on how to use one to cause localised seismic disruptions or anaesthetise a patient, then check out the Starfleet Survival Guide. Note that to really mess with the tricorder, you'll need a Thoron generator. Number six, medical tricorder. We have Beverly Crusher, or rather Gates McFadden, to thank in part for the gloriously detailed TNG era tricorder technical information available to us. McFadden, a stickler for getting medical procedures as accurate as possible, as they put it in the Star Trek The Next Generation technical manual, requested a set of consistent operating guidelines that were then devised by designer Rick Sternbach. From the manuals, we know that The Next Generation era medical tricorder is basically a standard tricorder with a specialised medical peripheral on top. This attachment adds 86 electromagnetic devices designed for medical use. The removable hand sensor has 15 high resolution devices capable of active and passive scans of the entire body in internal organs, infectious microorganisms and more. The TR-590 Tricorder X, introduced in Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Voyager, had the detachable hand scanner in the back. The original series medical tricorder was also a standard tricorder with benefits. According to the Starfleet Medical Reference Manual, the medical tricorder was outwardly similar to other modules but came equipped with a diagnose, analyse and record modes as well as the remote scanner. Larger than its 24th century counterparts, the TOS medical tricorder Order, had the handy advantage of a lower compartment with emergency surgical kit. Number five, Klingons have Hokrame too. So focused are we on our favourite Starfleet models, we often forget that other alien species in Trek have their own versions of the tricorder. Even the warrior race needs to scan things, all the better to batleth you in the end. The first time we saw a Klingon tricorder, Hokra, singular in the language, on screen was in Star Trek 3 The Search for Spock, when Kruge whipped one out on the Genesis planet. The piece was designed by Industrial Light and Magic, who also created the Klingon Bird of Prey, Communicator, Daktag Knife and the updated Starfleet tricorder for the film. The reference book, The Art of Star Trek, has the preliminary sketch of the Klingon tricorder with spring-loaded on mechanism as well as practical lights and a note stating we'll have one or two lights in the back as well. The first Romulan tricorder to be named as such in dialogue appeared in Star Trek Generations and was designed by John Eves. Eves also designed the distinctly less hefty Jem'Hadar Dominion tricorder for the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode Hippocratic Oath. His original concept art showing the tricorder with Velcro prop attachments for a Jem'Hadar forearm was auctioned for $200 by iCollector.com. Number four, toys and tape recorders. If you grew up in the 1970s, you probably had your eye on the Mego Corporation's first ever Star Trek action figures and accompanying Enterprise bridge playset with spin around transporter and a whole two stools. Did the Spock figurine talk to you in a dream? As well as getting your transporter in a twist, you might have spent 1976 begging your parents for the Mego Star Trek tricorder. Essentially a jazzed up tape recorder with a microphone, the Mego tricorder did have a flip top lid and a relatively recognisable rotating moiré display screen. It also came with a cassette that on one side played 30 minutes of audio from The Menagerie parts 1 and 2, the other side was left blank, allowing children, overgrown or otherwise, to tape their own adventures, as a commercial from the time put it. Why was it blue? Dabba dee dabba damned if I know. The design of toy replica tricorders has certainly improved over the years, the Playmates and Diamond Select varieties certainly look the part, and the technology is keeping up too. The Wand Company is set to release a functional original series style tricorder with actual sensors and sound recorder, a working display screen, and interchangeable data discs. Number three, whatever happened to the Psycho tricorder? This is a 
the name of a bloodthirsty sentient tricorder that will stab you in the shower, it's an offshoot of the medical model that only ever featured in one episode of the original series, Wolf in the Fold. The psycho tricorder, as seen in that episode, was also just a standard tricorder prop, capable of scanning and recording memories and of psychological examination more generally, the psycho tricorder could be operated by a medical technician, although they might get killed by Jack the Ripper before they can get to the bottom of any hysterical amnesia. The psycho tricorder has appeared in a smattering of beta canon works. In the original series Mud's Angels short story, The Business as Usual During Altercations, we even get a psycho historian with a psycho tricorder, but that's about it. It is possible that the functions of the psycho tricorder were later incorporated into the standard medical tricorder, or made redundant by other techniques. In the Star Trek Voyager episode Night, the doctor uses a medical tricorder to help diagnose Neelix's anxiety attacks as nylophobia, the fear of nothingness. Number two, raspberry pie in the sky. Back in the day, you could transform your Pam pilot or pocket PC, <laughs> remember those, I'm so old, into a rudimentary tricorder. Then there was naturally an app for that, although not without a few cease and desists from CBS. Taking full advantage of the miniaturized computer power of the Raspberry Pi, fans have also built their own impressive multifunctional models neatly nicknamed Pi Quarters. Chris Detective Zero Barrett, or Obso1337 on YouTube, is one such fan who took a Diamond Select TOS Science Tricorder and turned it into much more. Barrett disassembled the toy, added in the Raspberry Pi, a display screen, battery, and a Sense Hat board, originally developed for use on the ISS, equipped with an accelerometer, magnetometer, gyroscope, barometer, and temperature and humidity sensors. Not only does Barrett's TOS Tri Pi Quarter, TR108 in his naming system, look like the real thing, it works like one too. Capable of recording sensor data from the environment and translating it on screen as close to the original series graphics as possible. And if that weren't extraordinary enough, his next project, the Pi Quarter 2 TR109, was based on the next generation TR566 model with functional buttons, a display screen, lights, a thermal camera, and an environmental sensor package. This guy's awesome, and I would like to be his friend. Number one, take your sci-fi art, scan a broken heart. What medical professionals do today by employing an array of tests, techniques, and technologies has been pretty much scaled down to the one belt clippable or over-the-shoulder carryable in Star Trek. The vision of such diagnostic ease has inspired many to translate the on-screen dream of the medical tricorder into a real-life lifesaver. In 2012, the XPRIZE Foundation, a non-profit that does its best to promote a Gene Roddenberry-esque equitable and hopeful future of abundance for all, launched the Qualcomm Tricorder XPRIZE. Teams were challenged to create a tricorder-like device that could accurately diagnose 10 core medical conditions such as atrial fibrillation and abnormal heart rhythm, diabetes or stroke, and three elective conditions including hypertension, mononucleosis, glandular fever, and HIV. The device also had to be capable of monitoring five vital signs in real time. Five years later, no participant had met all of the criteria for the $10 million grand prize, but the trekly named Final Frontier Medical Devices won the first prize of $2.6 million for DXTER, an at-home medical instrument kit with AI diagnostic app. Voyager's EMH Robert Picardo even opened the awards ceremony with the required please state the nature of the medical emergency. Dudes, it's your favorite Rysian meteorologist Chad Torka here to tell you about the awesomeness of Squarespace. They've got the next generation of technology with their fluid engine. You know me, my friends. I'm Salt the Riser. I don't get that techno babble. So when I talk about fluid engine and how awesome Squarespace is to use, even I can use it. If I can, you can. They can even help you make custom merch. Sign Chad Tarka neck brace is coming soon. And you can sell it via the online store that y'all they offer. And when you're ready to rip some waves like me, go to squarespace.com forward slash trackculture for a free trial and for 10% off your first website or domain purchase. You're awesome, my dudes. Do the awesome thing. Chad Tarka out. That is everything for our list. This has been one of the most fascinating ones I've recorded in a while, so thank you so much to Jack Kiley for the original article on which this is based. Thank you as well to Mel Braun for editing this into the beautiful video you have just seen. Folks, don't forget to go and follow us on Twitter at Trek Culture. You can follow us on Instagram at Trek Culture YT, and we are, of course, on Blue Sky as well at Trek Culture. Please make sure that you are liking, sharing, and subscribing. Make sure that you live long and prosper. Make sure that you look after yourselves. Give yourself a scan every so often to make sure that everything is going okay for you. Thanks a million and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!